Okay. <clears throat> this is uh, less of a talk and more of just a quick plug for um, the library that uh, Ryan Trinkle came in and talked about. He's been working on called Reflex. Uh, and then the accompanying um, front end programming library, Reflex DOM. Uh, what Reflex is, is um, <clears throat> it's a functional reactive programming framework uh, that's targeting, uh, you know, modern kind of GHC type system stuff and also is optimized for its speed. Uh, and then since it's, you know, targeting GHC, you can use GHCJS to compile your Reflex applications down into JavaScript and then put them on web pages. Uh, you know, that's fine, and um, there's a lot of interesting theory behind it. I don't really understand that much of how it works, but what I want to point out is that uh, it's really fun and easy to play with. Um, you can get a lot done without much code, and it really is fast. So um, I, I put together just a few examples here. Um, like in Reflex, the abstractions you're working with are like the familiar ones from FRP. You have behaviors, which are values that are function, continuous functions of time. And you have events, which are uh, you know, like streams of values that are delivered to you at discrete times. And then there's this kind of awkward middle thing in Reflex that apparently was some kind of concession to get really good performance, which is called uh, dynamic. And dynamic values are like a, a mix of behaviors and events. So you, you can always um, pull the value out of, out of a dynamic or a behavior by kind of poking and seeing what comes back. And you can also be notified through a push about a dynamic changing. So you can access the events and the behavior that are both buried within a dynamic. Um, so Reflex gives you events, behaviors, and dynamics. And then Reflex DOM gives you this monad called monad widget where you can do uh, HTML layout. So um, you have uh, composite widgets that come with a library, like text area gives you a text box. Uh, def is just a set of you know configuration options, and then in that monad it gives you back a, a dynamic uh, string, which is the stuff in the text box. Uh, boo -boo -boo. Oh yeah, you you get like low level HTML stuff, so like you can insert like raw HTML elements, which is a line break, and then there's this function dyn text, which takes a dynamic string and just prints it out. And with, with just those five lines of code, you get this kind of fun thing. Hello, reflex. Yeah, so it's a simple. Uh, I put together a few of these. There's um, timers built in. So it's not really uh, performant to have, you know, like, uh, denotationally, it's really cool to have time be a behavior. But performance-wise, that becomes difficult, especially in DOM world. So instead, um, uh, timers in Reflex DOM are event streams. So, oh, sorry, this is kind of going off the side here, but you have this function tick lossy, which gives you an event of time infos, and we can use dyn text to print that out. Uh, here's a slightly longer, ugly. Th this is some of the first Reflex code I, I wrote was putting this together. So it's it's more just a demonstration that you can write short stuff than you know uh, some sort of uh, reference for, for writing, you know, clean code. But the point is, that, like, a few lines of code, you can get these really reactive things. And all of the promises from functional reactive programming that you hear, that it's, like, easier to keep track of the sources of changes of your, of your elements uh, are kind of true. Like, I'm saying that as someone that doesn't really do front-end programming, uh, it's just kind of natural to, to have those abstractions. Uh, here's a Poisson event timer, uh, whatever. You know, here, here's an inhomogeneous Poisson process where I can use the text box to dynamically pick the Poisson rate mm -hmm. and uh, whatever I didn't basketball. Okay, and here's a fun thing, whack-a-mole. I just <laughs> wanted to see, like, can you write a game? You know, here's the code. So it's a little bit long, not too bad. Oops. Here's the moles popping up and down. Yeah, right. There's not much code. Uh, and I had to draw some pictures, so it wasn't just programming involved. But you know, the, the total the total effort that went into this was much smaller than it should have been, given what I think is like the cool results. And that, that's a huge testament to the design of the library. Okay, so um, that is it's fine. Like I think you're convinced of that. And the question is like, is it kind of fast enough to do some real work with? So um, 
I was uh, tasked to make a cochleogram uh, for work. This is like um, a thing that you use to analyze sound signals. It's like a spectrogram, but it's modeled on the human ear. So here's a, here's a cochlea, a human cochlea. Um, you have two of those in your head. Uh, the ones in you are even kind of shinier and grosser than this one is. <laughs> and uh, you know, th this is scientifically speaking, like the reason why it, it hurts when you stick your finger in your ear too far is you have this really delicate thing. But they're, they're interesting scientifically because these are the, the organs that transduce sound into uh, you know, the perception of sound that you can hear. And the way that this kind of implemented is um, there's something like 40 kind of concurrent threads of independent processing that are each carrying behaviors in the, in the reflex terminology where the behavior is kind of like this continuous function of amplitude at a particular frequency. So uh, do I have pictures? Of, yeah. Right, so here's a, bun here's a bank of gamma tone filters. And uh, the cochlea is basically just a set of these different filters that get run over the sound signal in parallel. And then those 40 channels come to your brain and you do further analysis anyway. Right. Uh, pretty rough sketch. So I wanted to know, like, can, can you like put all this reflex DOM stuff together and make like a real-time streaming cochleogram? Uh, it really is a, a test of reflex DOM's performance because you know how the, the fast Fourier transform works, more or less. Or at least you know like the, the time complexity of it goes with like uh, n log n of the number of samples. But because we have to independently do all of these filters, I have a filter bank that the filters aren't pure sine waves or something else. I can't do a fast Fourier transform. I have to do the wildly inefficient slow Fourier transform, basically. So um, I just started hacking this together with really no reason to expect that it would or would not be fast enough. So here's some reflex DOM elements buttons. I can choose some like parameters here. It's like the lowest frequency of the, this cochlea that I'm going to simulate and the highest frequency in the cochlea that I can simulate. How many different channels do I want? Let's start with uh, eight, so we don't tax anything too much. And then the sampling rate, there's a little bug here that one is the fastest sampling rate. Uh, and if this works, okay, yeah, so the different rows are the different channels showing the amplitude uh, of the sound coming in at different frequencies. And I can sort of validate this by whistling and picking one frequency. I just had a bunch of pizza, I can't whistle too well. Okay, so this is a test of like, can you kind of crank this, crank this up, like what happens? Yeah, so I'm, I can go all the way up to, um, to 64 independent channels. This is um, 60 frames per second. Uh, so the point is just really fast. And, and now if I whistle, it should be a little clearer. If you're into psychophysics, there's fun kind of stuff you can do with these sorts of things. Um, the way that you tell different vowel sounds apart is by looking at the pattern of um, harmonics that come out of your mouth when you do different sounds. So if I go, ah, there's kind of like a bright band here, bright band there. If I go, oh, only that one is really bright. E, this one's bright. Yeah, so yeah, this is kind of like a, this was supposed to be a research tool, not like a play around in Haskell tools. So I just want to demonstrate that some of that too. Sorry, the UI is totally unpolished. And then the, the, the last fun bit is I, I wanted to show you, um, you know, this is my first attempt at doing the Haskell thing and writing a, a little language. So I wanted a small um, arithmetic language so that you could dynamically pick parameters here. So this, this is the bandwidth of each of these filters. I just like, pick x to be some free variable of whatever the center frequency of any one of these columns is, and I can write an expression that that kind of reprograms the whole cochlea around around those parameters. So I have that for the color mapping to uh, what, what can we do? Whatever, something. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So that's that. Um, this stuff is all online. If you want to play with Reflex and Reflex Dawn, uh, go to Ryan Trinkle's Try Reflex Repository. Uh, you can see my stuff at um, github.com uh, slash cbmn slash cochleogram. And yeah, just have at it. Uh, Ryan loves to hear about people's little success stories with the library. 
Ja, tack. Oh, like how high can it go? Yeah, it runs the fan for sure. It kills your battery too. So. Um, let's see. Uh, no, too much. <laughs> yeah, too many, too many probably. Yeah, but you can do 128 at a lower sampling rate. Yeah. Oh, a, a lot of this is a testament to how cool the JavaScript sound processing libraries are, also, which I didn't know anything about before this project, but they're. You can do really fun stuff with sound in the, in the browser now. Uh, and a lot of it is available through like direct Haskell calls. Some of it is not. Uh, so you can also see like how this plugs into like the FFI for JavaScript if, if you're interested in it. Anyway, yeah, just a fun thing.